next probably most important uh, is uh, maintaining my body's uh, weight, which includes exercise. And I really don't like exercise, um, but if I, so if I can do it, anyone can. Sure. What I do is, uh, so right here I have next to me uh, a little speaker for music. So I agree, music is always around to keep me calm. Uh, and I have some weights here. And so when I'm not busy or I need to stand up normal, I, this is a standing desk that I can push up and okay. down. I'm sitting currently. Mm -hmm. um, move, just move, uh, whether it's a walk or pull, pull up some little weights that aren't even that heavy, just move those, do this. I, I try to keep my hips in great shape because that's one way to die as you get older by falling and breaking your hip. Oh, tell me more about that. How, how do you keep your hips in great shape? Because I, I love that because that is the thing. So many old people fall, they fracture their hips and then that's really a problem. So sitting, is a, sitting is a major problem in, in our lives. Mm -hmm. um, I had to sit down to write my book for two years and I, I literally could barely walk with, and I had a limp because I had a cramp in my piriformis muscle that wouldn't go away. But with regular exercise, uh, it did go away. And uh, so I, I think that the exercise, what's called hip hinges, so you, you lean forward and you pick up a weight. So you keep your shoulders back, you lean forward till horizontal, pick up a heavy weight. Uh, for me, that would be probably 100 pounds, something like that. But if you're older, you don't need to lift that much. And then just stand up till you're straight and then put it down again and do that 10 times. Are you leaning forward so you're like hinging like that? So you're like a number seven, if you like. Is that how you lean? You lean from the hips. Exactly. So you right. hinge over from the waist. And keep your back straight. You don't want to bend that. Yeah. And you pick up a waist with pick up a weight with straight arms and then bend them. Is that right? Keep your arms straight the whole time. As you pick it up, so you're picking it up sort of like that. No, you'll stand up and your arms will be at your side. Yeah. At the front and then just lean forward and put it down again. And then keep doing that with your arms straight down. Oh, so you don't lift your arms up. You just lift the weight off the floor. So a bit like a kettlebell. Is that yeah. right? You can use a kettlebell. That works fine, yeah. But you don't lift your arms up. You just lift your body up. Right. Okay, we can all do that. Hey team, it's Dr. Baird at Evolve Performance Healthcare. Today we're going to be going over the weighted hip hinge. So this is a progression from the hip hinge exercise. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use a kettlebell. And all we're going to do is we're going to start with the weight in front of us. So we're using a kettlebell. It can be any weight. And I'll go from the side so you can see a little better. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do the same hip hinge that we did before. So the main thing that we're keeping in mind is that our back is going to stay in that neutral position and the only movement is going to be at our hips. So from here what I'm going to do is I'm going to send my hips back, my shins are staying vertical, and my back is staying in line. So this is about as low as I can go. I feel tension in the hamstrings. So from there, we're just gonna do the reverse hip hinge and stand back up, keeping the back flat. So one more time at full speed, what it's gonna look like is down and up. So the main thing here, and a lot of mistakes that I see people make, is <clears throat> with the weight in front, they don't start the movement by sending their hips back. Instead, they just bend forward 
at their low back, and then they round there. So to really get this movement right, we want to make sure that we're sending our hips back and that at the bottom, all the tension is felt in the hamstring. So one last time, hips back, shin staying vertical, tension in the hamstrings there, standing back up. There you go, that's the weighted hip hinge. Thanks. So um, I've, I've read a lot about how you believe that exercise is, I mean, I've read that before, that exercise is one of the, the second most powerful ways to slow down aging, but that one you believe is perfect for the hips. Is that right? Right. And you'll walk better. And actually the, 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 the slower you walk, the, it, the, it's a predictor of how long you're going to live. And uh, so you want to maintain your ability to walk. Um, it's just a good sign of, of your overall health and, and uh, lack of frailty. There's another test you can do, which is how quickly and easily can you get up off the floor with crossed legs? I've done that one. I love yeah, that. How do you do? Crossed legs and crossed arms. You cross your legs, sit down and get up again. Yeah, yeah. I love that. And you just keep practicing it. Yeah, that's an indicator of how you're going to age, isn't it? It sure is. And middle-aged people tend to have to put one hand on the floor and older people have to get on one knee. Um, and it's an indicator of the strength of those muscles in your core. That's all it is. And it's important you maintain those. So when you're saying exercise, there must be some exercise better than others. So what if someone said, well, I do yoga every day or Pilates, are there particular exercises that are better than other exercises? Uh, well, I, I think it's a combination. They're all beneficial. So certain types of yoga will strengthen your muscles. Um, and that is just as probably just as valuable as lifting those weights. Um, but you also want to keep up aerobic exercise, but the good news there, uh, and I can say this because, uh, I really don't like losing my breath. It's a horrible feeling um, is that you can, you can do 10 minutes a few times a week on it. If you have a treadmill or go running outside when it's warmer and just 10 minutes has been shown to be greatly beneficial. You don't have to run for miles to get the benefits, but you do want to put your body in a state where you're so puffed that you couldn't carry out a conversation. And that again, puts your body in this defensive state. It in, you know, what is a million years ago, probably our ancestors were running around on the Savannah mm. and that's what we're built to do. Our bodies, if we're sitting around eating all the time and not feeling cold, not feeling too hot, our bodies become complacent and they don't fight back against disease and aging. If you can't run because you say, well, my knees have gone and I live on a hill, what do you think about rebounding using a mini trampoline and getting out of breath that way? Great. Yeah, I've done that before too, especially in winter. It's useful. Yeah. Do you think that's as good as running if you really work up a sweat on it? And Yeah, absolutely. Because I heard that the anti-gravity part of rebounding was that the aerodynamic was really good for your lymphatic system. Do you think that's true? Makes sense. No, I hadn't heard that. That's really interesting. Okay.